now go. All right. Whoa. All right, before we get started, this was just a few pages long, chapter two. Oh, I should probably do an introduction for the people on YouTube. Um, this is week two of the Showing Up series um, over this book, Showing Up, uh, Carrie Willis and Margaret Michael. And we're going to be discussing chapter two, you know, the ways that God talked to us, the way that we feel that he's speaking to us, the way we feel led and anything else like that. So here's chapter two. Uh, before before we get into my notes, that's, I did take some notes to be ready with some talking points or anything else like that. Um, I just wanted to hear from anybody if um, maybe they found some sentence or story or section of chapter two was especially profound from them that spoke to them that uh, was used, they found useful. I thought it was very interesting, um, but what is the difference between showing up and being present and being somebody's friend? Is there a difference? Is, um, uh, is it the same thing? Showing up, being present, and being a friend. Mm -hmm. anybody have thoughts on that? What's the difference between those three? Or is there any difference between those three? I think they can link all together. Mm -hmm. I think they can coincide with each other, you know? I think showing up to me um, speaks to speaks to obedience maybe a little bit more i think they're all very similar they they can be very similar and they can even uh kind of seem like the same thing um showing up is like when god asks us to go somewhere and like okay we'll go you know we're, we're speaking about uh jonah right now in in our church and we're going through a series of that and uh you know god asked jonah to go to nineveh and jonah's like nope I'm good. That's kind of like the opposite of showing up. But I mean, it doesn't even have to be something that serious. It could just be, you know, I think like being present is just being in the being in the mindset, maybe of um, who's around you, what's going on inside of you, how God's speaking to you and people around you that might need um, maybe not to be preached to, but just uh, might need like the presence of God near them and just God living in and through you, you know, seeping through your very being is, is, is kind of like just being present. Like God is in you. So bring God to other people, you know, and, uh, being a friend might be something a little bit more personal than, you know, you can, you can show up and you can be present with a complete stranger, you know, somebody that you just met being a friend seems to be something a little bit more deep, something a little more personal, you know. Um, you might be, you might be more willing to share, um, might be willing to share more with a friend than, than somebody you are being present with. But I think all three are very, uh, very powerful, very, um, I, I think that's what the book is talking about. It's just like, you know, we're being the, the vehicle for God. We're just bringing God to other people and letting God do the work, and just looking and watching it happen and being obedient and being amazed by the stuff that he can do. Am I right? What do you, what do you think about all that? Because I was just sharing thoughts. I didn't write anything down. That's just kind of what I was, what I was thinking. You got anything to spit back? Well, uh, no, I mean, if, if you're a friend, you show up anyway, and you're present. Mm -hmm. Like, I think maybe what this book is talking about is as you intentionally ask God to show up through you, maybe to your friends who are unsaved. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and, 
and I, yeah, that's sort of what I think, but I'm not sure if, oh, well, I don't know, because I don't see in here where you necessarily have to start preaching about the word to your friends when you show up intentionally. I see that, I mean, they know that I'm a Christian. And so I guess that they, that I bring that, I hope I'm not negative, you know, not, not a negative reflection. I think sometimes you don't know, you don't know how you come across even with your friends. Yeah, I get that. I get that. I think, <clears throat> I think there's a difference between being present and just being there like <clears throat> that was my dog i'm not sure if you heard that or not <laughs> um there's a difference between being present i think in the way that uh that pastor carrie and uh margaret are talking about is um being present and being aware that god is there with you so people can see god in you you know just being there <clears throat> and just being in the room with somebody else is not exactly being present you know, it's, 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 it's kind of a different thing, you know. Um, <clears throat> did you get to um, the Joe, part where, I'm sorry, Joe, ahead, who's talking? Um, I can go to church and I can be there. <clears throat> but I might not be present <laughs> while I'm at church if my mind is not with me, correct? Right. So, you know, it's it's all about um the perception of the people that are around you um see our perceptions shape how we deal with things look at things and, and move about so it's the same for other people so if they're watching us and they how are we being perceived i guess is the question because if we're being perceived that we show up but we're not really there um is that really carrying the message of jesus forward <laughs> you know what i'm saying where do you live i'm gonna mute this guy here we go okay sorry about that i was just getting some of the background noise cleaned up um i think uh, I'm thinking back to the story that uh, that Margaret was sharing about in the fair where they had all those chairs set up just for people to like sit and relax. And um, I don't think it was their goal to anyone who sat down. All right, let's preach the gospel to them. You know, let's just be there with them. Let's just love them and let's just let them see God through us. You know, so maybe you know for sure sometimes god does call us to go somewhere and speak to someone and, and preach the gospel to them but sometimes people aren't ready for that sometimes they're just ready for the presence part you know and god knows that that's why god calls us to different things that's why god sometimes calls us to be present and um just kind of be there for somebody and sometimes god calls us all right this person's ready to hear the gospel it's time to preach you know um both are equally important because both are callings from god you know um I, I think that's what they were talking about you know showing up and being present isn't always like hey here's the bible and here's this bible verse or story or whatever i feel like you should read it you know sometimes it's just i'm here and i care and just want to let you know that something simple you know I really like the verse on page, I guess it's 30, uh, where it says, to be present, if you're willing, God will use you. I mean, it's that simple. If you're present and then you're willing to the word of the Lord, God will use you for the benefit of his kingdom. Yeah, absolutely. I wanted to say something. My grandson was running around there a little bit, so I had to go on mute. Oh, um, that's okay. 
yeah, what jumped out, and, and it, it was on page 27 at the bottom, and uh, Jesus pretty much invited himself to the house. In this, in this day and age, you wouldn't invite anybody here, you, you know, and he accepted. But you just couldn't invite yourself to somebody's house in this day and age, you know? And he said, I must stay at your home, at your house today. Mm -hmm. I must. <laughs> he wasn't asking any question. He was, he was actually demanding that he stay, you know? And, and he accepted. So I think at, at that point, Zacchaeus, I mean, obviously recognized who Jesus was. Saw Jesus completely and fully in the person, right? So Jesus is like, hey, I'm staying at your house. Like, who is Zacchaeus to say no? <laughs> you know? Okay. Um, and maybe that speaks to us, like how we reflect Jesus in us. If somebody sees Jesus completely and fully in us, and we say to somebody, maybe something a little less personal, like, hey, I must have lunch with you. You know, you seem like a really interesting person. I must have lunch with you. Or we, I, I really feel like we need to meet. You know, if somebody sees that power, not your power, but God's power in and through you, would they feel obliged to say yes also in very much the same way that Zacchaeus did? Uh, one thing that I liked was on uh, page 31. They called, um, can you hear me all right? I, I can, I also have barking dogs, I'm sorry. Sorry, is this a little better? Mm -hmm. All right, so um, they called presence, um, friendship, evangelism. And I like that because um, like you can have a relationship or have like a meaningful connection with somebody, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's out of love. But the way that they uh, called it friendship, it means like your presence, like something is coming out of it in a positive light. Sort of like the way, um, like we wait in faith. Like it's not just the way we need to wait faithfully and we can't just show up, but we have to be present in love and friendship. Mm -hmm. that, um, that was important. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great point. Not only do we have to be there, we have to be turned on, like, and understand that God is there with us, too. That's, that's what kind of what it is about being present. <clears throat> you know, Patty, that question that you shared, that was um, in, in the beginning, what's the difference between showing up, being present, and being a friend? No, I, just, I, I left you with my thoughts on that, but you guys are aware that um, Pastor Kerry is going to be here at the, at the last of our meetings, too. That sounds like a really good question to ask him, too. You know, not that my question, not that my answer is uh, invalid or anything, but coming straight from the author, it sounds like it would be pretty powerful. And he just has a wonderful way of wording things that sound uh, that make you understand. <clears throat> um. Where am I in the book? I made notes all over the place. So, if we're being honest with ourselves, I remember uh, uh, we read this chapter last night with my wife um, on page 31 in the middle. It says, before you can say or do anything, you must be present, ready to connect, and ready to care with no strings attached. Now, listen here. This means patiently offering a hand of friendship to anyone and everyone who will accept it. If we're being honest with ourselves, are we, can, can we do this? How do, how do you feel about that? To anyone and everyone. That's a lot of people. It's a lot of people that might make us feel uncomfortable. You know, how do you, how do you feel about offering that hand of friendship to anyone and everyone who might accept it? As an extrovert, not a problem. I have yeah. no problem reaching my hand out. As a medic, I mean, I was, I would jump in at the chance. So to me, I, I take that as a challenge that I will truly in, get enjoyment from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and for me, that would be just the opposite. It would be highly, highly stressful for me to be um, 
not I can be friendly, but not but to be friends with someone who pulls me down, but wants to be friends, but pulls me down and drains me and gets on my nerves. Well, I can be friendly. I, I certainly could not reach out the hand of friendship. I would basically, and I have, I'm ashamed to say, very politely said, I just don't think I'm that person for you. Mm -hmm. And I'm not. It would be devastating in so many ways. Yeah, I get that. I get that. Thank you for your honesty. Mm -hmm. I get that. Some of the... Yeah. the Go ahead, Lauren. Are you are you, you going to say something? Yeah, I had a, a bad reaction to that also. <laughs> um, my kind of like self-protective, uh, like alarms went off, you know, extending my hand of friendship. That means that's huge to me. That's a big thing. You don't just give to everybody um, because a lot of people will exploit it. And um, I can't see myself doing that if I'm being completely honest. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're on the same boat, Lauren. <laughs> yes. I mean, and you are absolutely correct. I, I've had people take advantage. And you know what? I let uh, judgment be by God. Uh, you know, hey, if that's the way it's going to be, no, no problem. It's not. We'll just part separate ways. And, you know, I won't. I'll still be a friend. But um we might have different terms. <laughs> different yeah, I, for me, it's not really being taken advantage of. It's just that it would be so draining that mm -hmm. I couldn't even be a friend to somebody that I wanted to, that I was friends and friendly. And I felt like that was a, that that was somewhere that God was leading me. Mm -hmm. You can't be all things to all people. Right. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I struggled with uh, reading that it's just like well it reminds me of when Jesus said if they don't accept you just kick the dust off your shoes and uh, continue on um, so it makes me think like preemptively like what if they don't accept the help so I'm kind of like reactionary where it's like I'll retract like offering extending help like just expecting them to say no beforehand. And I know it's uh, pretty pessimistic, but um, I just imagine like more so like if I offer Jesus to somebody, I'm more afraid that they'll say no and hurt themselves. Mm -hmm. So you're more afraid, um... Are you more afraid that the person's going to say no because that's rejection of you or or, or for themselves and their own souls? I'm, I'm, just, I'm just curious. Uh, so like for myself, mm -hmm. I'm used to like being like the butt of the joke. Like I can take like anything pretty much, but it's mm -hmm. more like for um, their own sake. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of hurt and pain and confusion in this world right now man so i can see how some of our automatic responses might be you know what's the point of trying with this person doesn't seem like it's worth it you know but uh that's when you know just constantly being present and allowing god to work in and through you and and sometimes like in uh somewhere in the chapter i don't remember exactly where but uh when Pastor Kerry was talking to the guy in Germany and the guy in Germany went to the coffee house and these people just started showing up to him, you know, like they saw God in him and, and initiated a conversation with him about spiritual things. And that's what really like gave him the confidence that uh, what God was preaching through Pastor Kerry wasn't a load of garbage. It was, it was for real, you know? So sometimes maybe that's what we need. Is just like be present in the moment and be aware of God in ourselves. And so a lot of a lot of times those interactions will happen not from our own effort, just naturally. You know? I think that's the whole point of what being really simple. Um, you know, it sounds almost too simple, mm -hmm. just being there, showing up. Um, and so when I think about this, 
when you put it that way, it's like, all right, that sounds easier because when, when it's me, I'm thinking, all right, I need to know what to say. I need to know how to approach them. Yeah. I need to come up with like counterpoints if they're going to argue, like, <clears throat> but, um, where was I going with this? Um, simply just showing up. And like, I think we talked about last week, or maybe it was your sermon this Sunday. Um, God doesn't tell you exactly what you're going to do when you get there. He just wants to tell you, go there. And then I'll tell you what to do oh, once you get sermon. there. Yeah. Was it? Yeah, it was. Yeah. So go there. Let's see if you're going to be obedient. You're going to show up and then I'll tell you what to do. Ooh. And that makes it so much easier because we don't have to come prepared. You know, if we already have Christ in us, um, out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. So it's already inside you. Once you show up, it's like, God's just going to orchestrate it. And what will come out of you will be Christ. Wow. And I wanted to say to Orion, if it gets difficult, uh, that's when you have to pray for discernment and let God, God, godly wisdom help guide your steps. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate that. Yeah, that's true. Another Bible verse that I thought of was um, a wise man when his souls. And I always thought like you have to be wise, like you have to prepare to like get to the um to the challenge. But then what well, Lauren was just saying, if you come, then God will give you the preparedness already. And um this past weekend at church, I was looking at um the left side and the right side of the uh, pews. I noticed there were like eleven people on the left side. I'm not like big into like superstition or anything, but um there were like 11 people on the left side, 10 people on the right side. And then I saw like a pot of flowers on the left side. There were five. And then there were four on the one on the right side. And then I looked at the um, one scripture that says, go make disciples on the left side. And then what another poster on the right side said, uh, the world is in God's hands. So then I thought like, I'm putting too much weight on like the left side. It was like, go make disciples. And I'm not letting God take care of it. Um, and I was kind of like thinking equality, just like let God handle the situation. And then like the making the disciples part will come naturally. So that's yeah. what I thought about when Lauren was speaking to. That's awesome. That's awesome. Do you guys read page 33? <laughs> My wife and I were taking turns reading pages and mine was 33. So I just read that one sentence and said, all right, you got the next page. <laughs> but uh, actually what's on it is, uh, is pretty profound also. And I think it's also on the bottom of page. Yep. On the bottom of page 35, it says, can you do that? Can you sit and talk? Can you let Jesus in you come through in a way that is comfortable and natural? I think that's what showing up is about. That's what being present is about. Just being aware that Christ is in you and all the things that you feel uncomfortable, all the things you might feel uncomfortable about, the, thing, the interactions with people and, um, you know, fear of rejection, um, fear for them like all those fears is just all right I, I i recognize these these are here but i also recognize christ is in me and he can overcome all those fears so let me just show up watch him show out and just be impressed by it you know <clears throat> that's kind of how i feel about that page presence evangelism that's what they called it Presence evangelism. And I know on one, on one page it said, uh, uh, I don't know exactly where, but it said something along, along the lines of like, you don't have to have training. You don't have to know how to preach. You don't have to, you know, go to school for years to just be there with somebody, you know, and, and that and just the wonderful things that could happen just from being there and being present. You know, that could, that could lead to stories that you tell decades later about somebody who got saved through God's ministry through you. You know, it's never our ministry. It's never the things that we're doing. 
It's always about what God's doing through us, you know? Yeah, we're supposed to be a vessel, you know, for God to speak through us, work through us. You just, we just have to be there and present mm -hmm. and allow the Holy Spirit to, you know, work through us, you know, not, not push, you know, or, or, or try to solve things or, uh, you know, but just to be there and, and, and just be a vessel for God's Holy Spirit, you know, mm -hmm. you know, just like God uh, covering us, you know? with Gideon you know yeah that's cool yeah I like that 80 percent of life is just showing up and you don't need the training you know sometimes I've gotten um caught up on that like well I don't have all the answers to everything like what if I get like some deep theologic question and I can't answer um and something that might may have like stopped me is like wanting to do everything well doing it right, saving face, but it's okay to do things and be awkward. It's okay to kind of like not have answers and fumble over words. As long as you're there, that's all God is asking. Just be there, mm -hmm. do it. Like doesn't have to be well, perfect. Just be there, do it. Yeah. yeah. Doing yeah. it awkwardly, like fumblingly is better than not at all. Yeah. Yeah. There's been more than a couple of sermons that I've worked on and that I wish I worked on some more, you know, before Sunday morning came, but, you know, time got away from me or whatnot. And I'm just like, all right, let's go, you know, and like some of those sermons were like powerful stuff. And it wasn't even like me. It was just, all right, I showed up in front of the camera. Here I am in my living room. And like the things that are coming out of my mouth, I'm like, wow, like I'm, I'm saying, wow, as I'm preaching, because like God's <laughs> speaking to me in real time, you know, because it's just really cool when that happens, you know, and that doesn't have to be preaching, like with my example, that could just be it everyday life, you know, just be in there and trust in God and just be ready to say, wow, because he's going to do some awesome stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> Presence practice two. Did you guys get a chance to to work through that at all mm -hmm. where it says uh read luke 15 and nineteen ten, and then there was some discussion questions uh towards the bottom or, or right under that uh i thought we might want to work through uh luke nineteen ten says for the son of man came to seek and save the lost to seek and save you know er earlier in the chapter um he talked about both of those things. Just remember that, like, we were all lost sheep at one point. All of us. And God sought us out. That's the first thing that he did. Before he saved us, he sought us out. That's something to think about. That's something to think about as we're allowing God, as we're being the vessel for God in the world. And with even our, with our loved ones, with uh, people that we don't know yet. You know, as we're being that vessel, are we ready to seek and then save? You know, it's more than just, you know, going up to somebody and being ready to preach. Because that's like towards the saving part, you know. We're just seeking somebody out who might be ready to just see God through you. We only so, are supposed to plant the seeds, right? Let yeah, God water it. Exactly right. Right. <clears throat> so um looking at the time we got 38 okay so we're not going to read all of chapter of luke 15 but they are some uh if you didn't read them you know they are some pretty familiar bible stories it talks about uh the parable of the lost sheep and if you haven't heard that in the sermon at least once or twice a year <laughs> you guys need to talk to pastor owen um then it talks about the parable of the lost coin where a woman had 10 silver coins and lost one and then spent a whole bunch of tour part her whole house looking for it. And when she found it, she was so excited about finding that lost silver coin. And then the last one is the parable of the lost son or the prodigal son. That's also a very powerful story that a lot of uh, new and old Christians are very familiar with. But um, if you're not familiar with these stories and you want to discuss them later, you guys can reach out to me. You know, through email, we'll set up a time, phone conversation or whatnot. Um, I'd be willing to talk with you. But just to save time for tonight, um, we're not going to read through all of 
Luke 15. But if you did, and if you and even if you didn't, and you're familiar with those stories, the first question here. It says, why is the lost becoming found so important in heaven? What do you guys think about that? Well, first off, he tells us that it's his desire that none should perish, mm -hmm. but that all should have everlasting life. So yeah. if, if that's the desire of his heart, shouldn't it be the desire of our heart? Absolutely. None shall perish. I wrote that down in my book. That's a good one. Why is the lost being found, or coming found, so important in heaven? We were lost. Absolutely. Absolutely. Lost and then found. That saved a wretch like me, right? <clears throat> yep. So, yep. I mean, it... You know, if that never happened, then we can't be Jesus to the next person. Mm -hmm. And that person can't be Jesus to the next person. So God's kingdom is not going to grow. Sure. Also. Sure. I like to believe that there was a celebration in heaven when I got saved, right? Amen. Right. And I think so with each and every one of us here tonight, you know, and if even if you're not there yet, if you're participating and you're not quite there yet the day that you do become saved there's going to be a huge celebration in heaven it really is um we'll celebrate here too <laughs> absolutely absolutely <laughs> yeah uh what i wrote under that is uh victory i think of football just because it's super bowl sunday you know but your favorite football team when they win my wife knows i'm yelling in the living room on every play you know, something huge happens. I'm like, yeah, we're cheering and stuff like that because my team did something cool. You know, I like I like the Pittsburgh Steelers because they're the best franchise in football, as everybody knows. Um, but uh, uh, you're going to make me put my image of the Eagles back yeah. up. Aren't you? <laughs> but you know, just as uh, football is huge in America, there it is, the Eagles thing. <laughs> football is huge in America, and we cheer for our team, right? But are we cheering? For our for Team Jesus, when somebody comes to God, when we have that victory, you know, when we see a victory happen, are we are we having that same kind of cheering where we're like super excited about it and like, you know, because just one soul is worth it. Am I right? Yes, absolutely. Victory. That's why the loss becoming found is so important <laughs> in heaven. There will be more happiness in heaven over one person who turns to God, over 99 people who already have God's approval. Why does Jesus emphasize that point? I think Mark and I already spoke on that when he said we were all lost sheep. That's what I wrote. We we're all lost, lost sheep at one point in our lives. You know, and Mark talked about that also. It's so worth it. When you know that 99... He knows those 99 sheep are going to stay right there and they're going to be safe and they're going to be okay. But that one sheep that's gone, that's lost, they're in huge danger. Those 99 sheep, they're already safe and secure in eternal life. But that one sheep that's in huge danger, huge danger of hell, you know, that's something that we don't talk about a lot in, uh, in today's church, in today's Christianity. That one sheep that's gone, that, that's a huge, huge danger. Eternity is a very long time. So that's why Jesus emphasizes that point. That 99, they're already safe. He's got eternity to spend with that 99. But that one sheep, there's a limited time to bring him back to that 99 before they're eternally lost. And that's a huge problem. That's a huge problem. There's a sense of urgency and, there for sure. And to go get that one sheep takes effort. Mm -hmm. And that would be effort on our part to reach out and go. Yeah. Yeah. Just be present for the sheep and let God do the work. Let God show up and show out. 
It says, what do the sheep, the coin, the son, and Zacchaeus all have in common? So the sheep was lost, the coin was lost, the son was lost, and so was Zacchaeus. They were all lost, and they all got found. But what were the people's reaction when Zacchaeus found Jesus? And then Jesus was like, I'm going to his house. Let's, let's reflect on that for a minute. They're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> He's eating with a sinner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they weren't very impressed. Didn't seem that way, did they? Didn't seem that way at all. What did I write down? Because I know I wrote something on this. Oh, here we go. But that was a huge gift by Jesus, right? To go to Zacchaeus' house. Do we feel jealousy at times for the God-given gifts of others that other people receive? If we're being real with ourselves, I think so. Sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because our, 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 our vision is like this. And we don't see the whole picture and what's going on. Worried about us, our immediate family, our closest friends, and things like that. And then when something awesome happens, like, you know, why did this happen with that person? What? We should be, we should be happy for that person, not mm -hmm. envious of them. Yeah. We should rejoice with them. Yeah. That's that humanness coming out in us sometimes. Yeah. We have full trust that full trust that uh, those gifts are given to those people for a reason, you know, and they're not. And one would hope that those God given gifts are used to continually further the kingdom of God, to continually bring more and more victories to God. So if anything, when we see somebody uh, and, and we're feeling, we're feeling some kind of way about it, a lot like people were for Zacchaeus, maybe we should think about the big picture. Like, wait a minute, how, how many people did Zacchaeus bring to Jesus after this event happened? We don't know. We don't know. But I'll bet it was more than one. And even if it was just one, isn't that one worth it? Wasn't that one worth the gift that Jesus gave him? Because that's another victory for heaven. That's awesome. See what time it is. Okay. Read the parable of the sower below. You guys remember Margaret's story? Where uh, I think she was in her young 20s or maybe late teens or something like that and uh, was uh, pulling away from God and then driving a car and then all of a sudden this, uh, this parable hit her out of nowhere as she was driving her car and just kind of like, you know, set her straight. Like, oh, I don't, I don't want to be stony ground. I want to be fertile soil. So the parable says this. That same day that Jesus left the house and sat down by the Sea of Galilee, the crowd gathered around him was so large that he got into a boat. He sat in a boat while the entire crowd stood on the shore. Then he used stories as illustrations to tell them many things. He said, listen, a farmer went to plant seeds. Some seeds were planted along the road and the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds were planted on rocky ground where there was little soil. The plants sprouted quickly because the soil wasn't deep. But when the sun came up, they were scorched. They withered because their roots weren't deep enough. Other seeds were planted among thorn bush bushes, and the thorn bushes grew up and choked them. 
but other seeds were planted on good ground and produced grain. They produced 160 or 30 times as much as what was planted. Let the person who has ears listen. So rhetorical question, as I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close out the night, but it's a rhetorical question. What kind of soil do you think you are? And what was, what support would you offer for that answer? You know, I see, uh, I'm not giving anybody homework, all right? I'm not a teacher. It's not my, my, not my thing, but maybe as a devotional this week, if you feel so inclined, this whole page is blank right here, right under that sentence. What kind of soil do you think you are? And I'm, nobody's going to ask you to share it. Be completely honest with yourself. But are you are you planted along the road? Are you on rocky ground? Are you in the thorn bushes? Are you on good ground producing grain? Or maybe some, maybe a mix of a couple. Maybe something else, and you might think of another analogy. Uh, quicksand. Uh, quicksand? <laughs> that's okay if that's you, brother. Be honest. <laughs> but that whole page 38 is empty, and maybe maybe it's empty like that for a reason. Just a little bit of honest journaling and getting to know yourself. You know, just a, just a slight, slight suggestion maybe for this week. What kind of soil do you think you are? I think that's a good place to end it for tonight. I'm going to ponder on that this week, too. As I close, does anybody have any prayer requests for this week? Um, for those that showed up uh, a, a little bit later, we are uh, praising because Stephen shared about his knee last week and it was receiving a lot of pain and he got a shot from the doctor. Uh, cortisone or steroids or some kind of shot from the doctor and it's feeling a whole lot better saying there might be a tear there there might not be so let's continually let's continue to pray for Stephen but also rejoice in that he's getting a little bit of relief, relief from that pain um, does anybody else have any other prayer requests yeah I do um, the people that you could um, write a little list of your friends that you're that you're present for yeah and i would just and i only have like about three on the list but not that okay. i don't have other friends but those are the three that i feel like god has led me mm -hmm. and um to and that just to pray that they would that they would be more have more fertile soil within them than the hard soil stony soil that's a good one Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? I would ask for prayer for my husband, Bob. He has a doctor's appointment next Tuesday. The last one was rather rocky. Um, not the doctor's appointment, but afterward, we ended up in the ER. So I'm praying oh, wow. that next week goes more smoothly. <laughs> what day next week? Tuesday. Tuesday? Tuesday. Okay. Yeah. And uh, Val Michaels and the Michaels family. Um, I haven't been reading the emails, so you're going to have to fill me in, Steve. He's been battling cancer. Oh, Michaels. Okay. I'm assuming Val is a longtime member of your church. You're a good friend. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll be, we'll, we'll be praying. Anybody else? That's Susan. How's she doing? There are tests and stuff like that. I'm not sure they're trying to get her into uh, a doctor. They said the first appointment they have is about know, end of March. So oh. her doctor's trying to get her in like ASAP. What about the blood work stuff? Is that coming back anytime soon? Uh, yeah. Yeah, soon. Yeah. Okay. Don't, don't know everything yet. And what's the new doctor for? What, what's the goal with them? Uh, endocrinologist i believe i don't know what that word means but um mm -hmm. is, is that a wrist doctor no no oh uh, that's a thyroid doctor yeah pretty much yeah okay and the endocrine system yep end of march right 
Hopefully sooner. Uh, hopefully sooner. Yeah. Yeah. Her doctor's trying to pull strings to get her in. Yep. Okay. Thanks. Absolutely. Anybody else? Yeah, we should pray for Pastor Owen and his family. Yeah. I texted him last night very briefly just because I needed a new password for YouTube, but um, I did send him a text and said, I hope he's having a good time in Florida. But yeah, absolutely. Praying for your pastor is super important. I'll never say no about that. All right. Do we have anybody who would like to close us in prayer? I'm shy. I'm sorry, Kathy, what'd you say? I said I'm a little shy on that. <laughs> okay. All right. I think, oh, Pastor Joe, you volunteered to close us in prayer. All right. There you go. That's thank you very good. much. <laughs> All right, Amen. Oh, I, I have a prayer, one more prayer request. Go ahead, Devin. Uh, just just uh, like school grades and stuff. School work, all that. Is it coming towards the end of a marking period for you guys? Uh, no, I just I just completed the marking period. I got all A's and B's. Oh, yeah, your dad told me you did I'm, pretty I'm, good. That's awesome. I'm just trying to, you know, continue that, so. All right. Heard your mom bribe you a little bit, but if the bribe worked, then that's all that matters, oh, right? 100%. <laughs> always works. Always works. <laughs> yeah, that's good, man. That's good. We're proud of you. All right. <laughs> Let's go to the Lord in prayer, everybody. Uh, Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for tonight. I want to thank you for taking over this meeting, God. God, I'm, I'm not even teaching, God. You're just facilitating through me. I just want to thank you for that. Thank you for speaking to our hearts, God. Thank you for helping us to understand a little bit more what it means to show up and be present for the people who need it the most. And most of all, we want to thank you for seeking us out. Seeking us out first so that we could be saved. God, there's no amount of words or actions that we could possibly take to show you how much we are thankful for that except maybe to live the rest of our lives as open vessels for you, being completely present and bringing more people to you. God, we thank you, thank you for all your promises. We thank you for all your blessings. And uh, I just want to pray that you open our hearts as we read chapter three this week. So we're ready to talk about and discuss and learn more even next week. God, I want to lift up these prayer requests to you tonight. Uh, I want to pray. Uh, I want to give you praise that Steve's knee is doing better. Um, just want to pray for continued healing. I don't, I don't think it's a hundred percent yet, but it's a whole lot better. And we thank you for that pain relief. And um, pray for continued healing for him, so that he's back to one hundred percent. Pray that. I want to pray for Bob, Susan's husband. Uh, and his uh, doctor's appointment next week. Not sure what it's for, but you know what it's for, God, because you know all things and you can heal all things miraculously and through medical science, God. And I just want to pray that it goes a little bit smoother than it did last time. And that he can go to this appointment, get the information and tests and anything that he needs to get done. And that uh, everything is done safely and completely healthy, God. I want to pray for Val Michaels as... as um, as they're continuing to fight cancer, God. And that's a nasty disease, and that's a difficult disease to, to live through and to watch somebody go through. But God, we know that you can bring healing and you can bring comfort in all kinds of amazing ways. So we want to continue praying over that situation, God. Amen. God, we want to pray for Susan, we want to pray for Susan and um, all the medical issues that she's going through. God, we want to pray for continued relief. My Bible we want to study. Pray, we want to pray for There's Bible study. Oh, we want to pray for continued relief. We want to pray for ex expedited uh, views to the doctor. 
expedited visits to the doctor and tests results and everything else like that. God, we just want to pray. We want to pray that things work out for her. We want to pray for Mark as he continues to support her and Devin as he continues to love on his mom. God, we just want to thank you for that family. We want to pray for Devin and his school grades. God, we give you praise that he did so well this past semester. We want to pray that he continues to focus and he continues to learn. And that um, he continues to grow in you. Thank you for his participation tonight. Thank you for um, his eagerness to do well in school, because we know that's important. And God, we want to pray for Pastor Owen who's receiving a much needed rest and um, who has faithfully served you and is continuing to serve you for so long, God. We just want to pray for uh, a spiritual rest for him. We want to pray that um, he's receiving renewal and relaxation during his, during his sabbatical. And when he is ready to come back, God, he comes back with a fire to serve you, to grow his kingdom, to love the people of Westchester, both in the church and outside of the church. We thank you for him. We thank you for his ministry. We thank you for his friendship. I say all of these things in Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 Have a good night, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Next week at seven. I've been enjoying these. I have been. So I'm looking forward to next week. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. God bless. God bless. God bless everybody. Bye. Have a good night. Good night.